Welcome and good morning. This is a live streaming from Our Lady of Fatima Parish. This Mass will be presided by Father Simon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. And today we hear the theme of light, which Jesus brings to enlighten us as well as remove our ignorance, to help our limitations in sin and to support us in every way so as to inspire our trust, inspire our confidence that he alone can lead us, he alone can guide us, he alone can make us see and help us judge right. To prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done and what I've had to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as the blessing of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us. May you forgive us the sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant to pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten forward, may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees for the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is standing the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, 
sent for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesus sent and had the young men brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There's, there's nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall want, I shall want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Besides restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. There's, there's nothing I shall want. He guides me in right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters. You, when, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, 
neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God may, might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can walk. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the, with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looked like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the, man, the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clear and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him? Since he opened your eyes, he said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, who, for the Jews, had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, but you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are the man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this man is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet 
he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin. And are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that what when Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see my see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see. So your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And today we have this text of the God, of the Word of God presented to us in all the readings from the first reading, the Gospel, the Responsorial Psalm, the second reading, the Gospel. Let us try to see what is common so we can get what the church wants us to understand today and meditate on. The first reading, Samuel was sent to the house of Jesse to, uh, to anoint one of the sons of Jesse as king. And so when Samuel went, Jesse presented seven sons. And these sons of Jesse were presented based on human judgment, human, you know, view, the understanding of the Father as well as Samuel. They thought, they look at the stature, they look at appearance, they look as human beings do. But it turned out that the choice they made, they made what they saw in these people was completely different from what God saw. And so God saw something completely different from them. And so he rejected all the children. In fact, the one whom by man's understanding and judgment was not, you know, maybe regarded or good to be a king was not even called there because he was a child Every factor seemed to be against him as far as kingship is concerned. And so he wasn't called. But then, God who sees differently and who sees well, who is the true light, rejected these ones and then asked for that little one who accounted as nothing to people. And so nobody sat down. They had to wait until David came. And he was anointed king. So we could see that God's way of seeing or God's understanding is completely different from us. So we see that it is God who truly sees. 
not us. And so we have to depend. Now, we have to depend on him. The responsorial son says, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. It means the one who says, the one who has the understanding, who has the wisdom, is worthy to be our eyes, is worthy to see for our sake, is worthy to judge things for our sake, is worthy to be our advocate, is worthy that we depend and rely on him. And that is why the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, because he sees better than us, he understands more than us, he can take care of us, you know, he is the true light. And that is why when you go down in the verses, the Bible says, he guides me in the right path. Because my eyes, you know, sight is blindness in God's presence, our own sight. But then God truly sees and guides us. The Bible says, the Lord orders the feet of the righteous. He guides us because he sees better, because he is the light. And so the Bible goes as far as saying that even if I walk through the dark valley, the dark valley, it is dark to us. It is by our judgment that we see it as dark. So even dark valley is not dark before God. And so we continue to see the theme of light. God who is the light, God who sees, God who can guide, and all that. When we come to the second reading, the second reading says, brothers and sisters, you were once darkness. We can hear that coming again. Because when you hear darkness, you know light is there. So on our part, we, won't, we can't see where. We are darkness. We are once darkness, but now you're light. So, live as children of light. In fact, in the second reading, the word light appears about five times. Darkness appeared twice. And all that. As well as visibility, the word visible, which is as good as light, also appears. So, we see this theme of light, everything from the beginning down here going through. The gospel acclamation, what do we see? We also see, the Bible says, the gospel acclamation says, I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me, we have the light of life. We can also hear the word light, 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 all true. That though we see, but the light of life, it is Jesus who gives to us. Now, the gospel, we could also perceive the same thing. The Bible says, Jesus passed and saw a man born blind from bed. Blindness, he couldn't see. He's in the dark, you know. And so, we notice the disciples also ask Jesus question in ignorance. Ignorance and blindness go the same. They said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Because there was this understanding, you know, that uh, when people are born blind or people are in that state, it must have been a result of great sin, either from the parents or something else, you know, maybe from the man himself. And so Jesus said, Neither he nor his parents sin. Here too, Jesus is bringing light. Because people have wrong opinion, people have wrong position, that such calamity befalling any man is a result of or consequences of the man's sin or the person's sin. And Jesus refuses that or refutes it and says, it is neither his sin nor the sin of um, his parents. So what we see here, at the movement, at the end of it, the end of the readings, Jesus, you know, opened up 
opened the man's eyes. And because he has authority, the Bible says he uses his saliva mixed with clay. Ordinarily, this could even blind a person who can see. But because he is the master, he knows what to do. He knows the quantity. He knows everything. And so what was supposed to make somebody blind, putting clay in somebody's eyes, rather made this man see. And so what do we notice here? What we notice here? Light, 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 Jesus. The parents, the father of this, that's Jesse, as well as Samuel, his limitation was shown. Samuel saw the other children thought they could be fit for the position of a king. But then God sees differently. And the Bible says God sees differently from men. Brothers and sisters, uh, now we are going through the crisis, the problem of coronavirus. Though we have different crises in our lives too. But the fact is that it will be very difficult for us to understand things. And at this time we have become more helpless. Because every minute, you know, people are dying. Every two minutes, people are dying. We are recording deaths. Decisions are changing. The world is changing. A lot of things are happening on account of this. But nothing is strange to the God we serve. Nothing is strange to God who reveals himself to us as light. All this is not just to tell us that God can see. It's not just to tell us that God is light. It's not just to tell us that Jesus is the light of the world. This is meant to kind of to help us trust him the more. This is to help us believe in him. This is to help us rely on him. This is to help us come to him. This is to help us seek his counsel. This is to help us trust his leadership. This is to help us submit to his guidance. This is to call us to trust our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, he knows what to do. He has a solution. He has always helped. He has always been with us. And the Bible says he loved, God loved the world so much that he gave his son. And so now many people may think we are suffering. It's because of our sin. It's because of this and that. Because they say this man was blind. Or this man is blind because of his sin. But Jesus is saying to us, things happen sometimes not necessarily because we sin. And I think in our case too, we mustn't because we know nothing. So we can't really say it is because of this or that. All we simply need is we are in a situation we need to turn to God. It could be personal situation, family situation, but as the family of the world, we are in this current situation together. Do you trust Jesus? If you trust Jesus, he will honor your faith. If we trust Jesus, he will honor our faith. For the Bible says the expectations of the righteous cannot be in vain. We believe that our Lord is Lord. Our Lord will save us. We trust him and in him. Let our heart be at rest. Let our souls find peace because we have a leader, we have a guide, we have a Lord who is able, who is the Alpha and the Omega. As long as he's there, let's surrender to him and let him take the lead and bring us healing, bring us peace, bring us restoration and re-establish the joy we seem to be losing. We pray the good Lord help and bless his word in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father,
Father of might, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the other because the Son of the Father, born of the Father before all ages, light, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of light, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Prayer of the faithful. As Lord, you have given us your word this morning, an opportunity to offer this sacrifice, which at this moment our joy seems to be diminishing, but you are strength. And so we pray that you strengthen our faith. We pray that in our confession, we take counsel in you. We pray that in our ignorance, we seek your light and come to you. For this we pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We, we pray for the government of the world and everyone who is working so hard to see that we reduce or slow down the spread of this virus as well as get some vaccines that we remove this epidemic from our midst. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless the efforts of this government, of the nations and the world. We pray that in their efforts, in everything they do, you will crown that with success. We pray, O oh Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are in the front line of this uh, crisis, the medical and health personnel, volunteers, different people who are supporting to help. Heavenly Father, we know the anxiety they go through as well as their families. We pray that you guide them, you protect them, you support them. Your power be in their midst as they work to help others. We pray, O oh Lord, 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 hear our prayers. prayers. We also pray that you, Heavenly Father, the Alpha and the Omega, we once again give light to those who are doing their best to find a cure and help for the situation we face. We pray that you will bring everything together, everything in perspective. We pray your power will help, your light will guide, and your wisdom you will direct, so that at the end of it all, we may have peace, we may have our society back, and we may have progress. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for people all over the world who are destabilized, who can't even worship, some who can do other things, some who have gone into depression, some whom at this time maybe imbibe or put themselves into some miserable, poor attitude. 
We pray that this situation will not put other people in conditions that may worsen their case, but we pray everyone we know what to do, we behave well because we are in together and exhibit the best attitude. For this we pray, O oh Lord, Lord hear a prayer. We pray for the leaders, spiritual leaders, a pope, our bishops, our priests, deacons, everyone who work so hard to see that the children of God are directed and assisted and helped in their faith. We pray that we continue to know the best way to sustain this spiritual momentum and keep communion with our God. For this we pray, O oh Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that at this time of fear and pandemic, for many selfishness we grow. We pray that we may see the need of our brothers and sisters who are suffering, who are in want, want of food, want of needs and other things, and not just pie things to ourselves, but strain our ears to listen to those who are in need, those who are in want, so we may reach out to them and share what we have. For this we pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us ask our Blessed Mother Mary to intercede for us and continue to pray for us even when we are not praying for ourselves. As we say, Hey Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, look with mercy and compassion on the prayers of your children for we make in faith and humility and thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God. No question to your goodness, we have the spirit of all of you. My hand, what has given me? It has given me to become for us spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever. Stay in of a question to open us. We have this one to offer for the divine work of human hair. Become for us a spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that a sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. The Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for good and good of all his church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. 
Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift to pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that it may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith will proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've had us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most just spouse, with blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us the trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the lamp of God, the Lord Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Look 
upon those who call you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give light, give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forever. Going to peace of Christ, this Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.